Well, howdy, 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 everybody. Long time no see. It is Tuesday, November... Uh, 22nd. 22nd at... 4.37. 4.37 p.m. I know you guys haven't seen me in a few days. You're probably wondering if I'm okay or not. I'm I'm fine. Um, I've been working on relaxing more because I have a tendency to get so almost high-strung that I don't sleep. And... Um, we've been making some changes, and I've been sleeping more. Um, I know we've gone back and forth, so we didn't say anything to you guys this time. Um, but, um, we just sleep better if we're together. After so many years of sleeping apart, having separate bedrooms, now we are sleeping in the same bed, and, you know, same bedroom and same bed, and sleeping more. Sleeping a lot more. And I think that's a wonderful thing, don't you? And that way, too, I don't have to, I don't have to, I was staying up at night literally listening to see if Brad was doing okay and he was doing the same thing. I hated having him at the far end of the trailer. And I think he felt the same way, didn't you? Yeah. And, I mean, because you wonder if your spouse is okay or not. Every time he'd hear a noise, he thought maybe I, I had fallen and vice versa. The dog kind of were pacing back and forth. Charlie kept going down and waking Brad up, barking at him for no reason. Now, he doesn't do that if we're in the same room, if we're in the same bed and stuff. He doesn't do that. No, he just sprawls. Yeah, the biggest thing we have is he wants to, he's always slept with me. And so he still wants to sleep with me. And so, you know, he's getting better about it. He at least waits until we get our spots and then he'll crawl in between us and he'll 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 lay there he's getting better about not sprawling as much until one of us gets out of bed to go to the restroom or whatever so um that's been going really well um and we've been working on getting more sleep um and uh yeah i took a few days off i did um much needed and sometimes you have to kind of recenter yourself sometimes i get a little blue this time of the year and I had to work on that, and, um, you know, so, uh, you know, so I could come back refreshed and not get all down about the holiday season. In the meantime of, of doing all of this and us getting even closer and stuff, uh, I have a renewed interest in cooking. Brad had no complaints on that. <laughs> so I've been doing most of the cooking. Um, like yesterday, I made a big mango batch of meatloaf i do this usually every time that we buy hamburger i will save part of it out and i'll make a big pan of meatloaf and then two loaf pans of meatloaf and the loaf pans of meatloaf brad will slice up here in a while and he'll freeze it I, how many do you put in a bag of the slices actually what i'm going to do is um I'm going to throw them on a cookie sheet. Okay. And then freeze them. Right. And, and then, then put them in a bag. Yeah. We did that before. It worked out super well. If you don't feel like cooking that night or you're in a hurry to get a, a couple slices of meatloaf, unthaw them, you know, have whatever size you're going to have, and bam, you have dinner. Meatloaf freezes really well. So um, I did that yesterday. I did a few baked potatoes. Um... Brad cooked some cabbage. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I've been doing. I've been doing more cooking. We cooked up a turkey and had some of that. And then yesterday I also um, cut the rest of it up. Saved the carcass, saved the bones and stuff. Going to make um, turkey uh, soup out of it, just like chicken noodle soup, turkey noodle soup. I'm going to make um, old-fashioned uh, egg noodles which all that recipe is, is two cups of flour, two teaspoons of salt, and they say four egg, or three egg yolks and one whole egg. I just do four whole eggs. And, I mean, I grew up watching my great-grandmother and grandmother make these egg noodles. That You would have, over every chair you could, you'd have newspaper, and then you'd have noodles drying. It's super easy to do. You don't have, even have to let the noodles dry. You're gonna let you're gonna drop them in your soup, and it's gonna thicken it up a bit anyway because of the flour, and it's it's really good. So um, I plan on making that because you cannot get grandma's noodles. 
the frozen ones anymore and um it's just we've been cooking more from scratch so we know exactly what's in our food um and we feel better the name of the game is to not waste anything that you've bought save that money because to me if i buy something and i don't use it and then i throw it away it's almost like i took that money and just threw it away you know um so we've been working a lot on that but i've been doing some resin pouring the last few days i um finished up some more um headbands and um i got marnie your package is on its way and um just been kind of working on that those of, of you that are, are my friends that i contacted about a memory plaque please um text me and let me know if you've got no pictures in the mail or or not because brad needs to start on those um so yeah i've been kind of excited about doing more domestic stuff i, I i've been doing a lot more around here haven't i honey mm -hmm. yes, you um you know i enjoy being a homemaker i've been a homemaker most of our marriage i've worked off and on but for the most part i've been just a homemaker and it's a job I enjoy. And, um, you know, the house is starting to straighten up. And we're starting to adjust to this this portion of our life that is, is very different than it used to be. It used to be all centered around family and, and all of that. Now it's just the two of us. Um, I guess you call us empty nesters. Uh, we still do have children in the house because we have our fur babies. But we have also decided that I finally can accept the fact of my age and that I can go to the senior center. We've talked a lot about how we're going to make friends in this area because what's happening, even though we've lived here a little over two years, is because of my disability and his disability, we haven't really been able to get out like we would like to. And also we had a problem with uh, running vehicles for quite a while until we bought this vehicle. So, um, we don't really have any friends in this area, and that really kind of stinks. I would like to have some women around my age that are into crafts. Uh, so, we're going to join the Senior Center up in Rocky Mount, and they have a wonderful pool that we're going to enjoy. They also have, they play card games like Bridge, uh, Pinochle, and Spades. Well... I've been teaching myself, and Brad's been teaching himself how to play bridge, because you play as, as as a team. So that would be something that we would enjoy also. Um, you know, just people our age, people that are going through the same things we're going through. We can all help each other with different disabilities or medical problems or just life problems or just friendship. You know, you can say something that, that happened in the, the uh, 70s, and they'll get it. Um, so I would love to make some friends in this area. So um, that's a kind of important to me. If you don't have a big family around or any family around, it's good to have your friends become your family. They always say that there's two families in life. There's the one that you're born into and then the one that you make later in life. And this is so true. And so um, we've been working hard on that. I thought... I'm not going to sit here during this whole holiday season and feel left out and feel sad again. So there's holiday cheer all around. You just have to go and find it. You know, we're going to find out where the good lights are, seasonal lights are to see. Um, we're going to find out where there's different events for Christmas and stuff. I'd love to hear some, some carolers or something. I'd love to hear some Christmas music. Um, so we're going to work on that. I think that will be good for both of us. Um, and, uh, you know, you can't change your life if you don't make the steps to change it. I had a friend, I, I do have online friends, and one friend said to me, well, make sure you don't become so isolated that you're not making friends. And I was like, that's already happened. And now that Brad is moving around so much better and so am I, um, we can go do more things. We can, now that we're able to walk through stores and stuff, that opens up so much more for us. So much more for us to be able to go and see. 
And I have to get it in my head, and so did Brad, that we don't have to walk the entire length of something. It's okay if we need to sit down for a minute. You know? Uh, so, it's like today, my lower back is killing me. I don't know. I didn't even say anything to you, but I don't know why. But my low, I must have slept kind of funny. So, um, you know, I'll do some stretching exercises. I'm still riding the bike. I'm still, you know, doing my arm exercises and everything. I'm still working on eating healthy. That's not as easy as it was because of not having as high a dose of, of Zempic. It's harder for Brad because he's not on it at all. Um, but we're just doing the best we can and we're not going to beat ourselves up for it. As long as you take a step to be healthy, then that's what, what it is. Uh, you know, um... I have a hard time with this time of year, and I don't. I know some of you guys are probably the same way. The greediness of this whole season really makes me disgusted. All of the commercial ads, all of the, you buy this, buy this, buy this. That's not what the holidays are intended for, and I really hate it. The holidays were not ever made for that. But retail has turned it into that. And we, the consumers, have gone along with it happily. And all the panic of Black Friday, which has turned into like a week of Black Week anymore. I mean, you're being bombarded every time you, you go into a Walmart website or Amazon or anything on all these pre-Black Friday sales. Don't be fooled into thinking that you have to partake in any of this. Because, frankly, especially with the way the economy is right now and everybody's so strapped, I will, I will, I will bet that we're going to see some phenomenal prices even the closer it gets to Christmas or right after. Because these retailers are not going to hit their goals that they hit last year because, you know, our inflation... And so I think we're going to see some phenomenal. Don't be fooled into thinking you have to run out on Black Friday and you have to buy things that maybe you wouldn't even buy. But it's almost this panic hysteria of, oh, my God, I must buy it because it's going to be gone. Retailers often will offer, say, that they'll have one or two of items so that you, the consumer, will panic and go buy it. When in theory, they have many of them left. And I don't know. I know I have a scratch right there. I don't know where I got it from. Anyway, <laughs> don't be fooled into thinking that at all. As as a retailer, when I would had my candle business, if I had a scent of, of wax melts that were not really selling, all I had to do was put that I only had so many left in this that I wasn't going to have any more of those, and they would sell right away. You know... But don't be, that's why I don't bid on auctions, because people will get into a bidding war, and you will lose sight that you even really wanted the item, because, oh, somebody else just upped the bid, I'm not going to let that person win, that's what it's made for, but don't be fooled, and don't be fooled into spending way more than you ever planned on spending, because you're trying to gain the love or get the approval of a family member or a friend because, you know, you're going to give them this grand gesture of a gift. It shouldn't be about the gift at all. It should be about the gesture. It should be about the love and, and the feelings and stuff. You should be able to give them what's in your price range or maybe you don't have anything that you really can afford. You can always make them something. You can always make them a meal, make them cookies, whatever. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. You can go to Dollar Tree and buy some nice little things, and they'll understand. They're probably in the same boat. Why go and buy more expensive gifts than you really can afford, so then they feel obligated to go and buy more expensive gifts that they really can't afford? But now both of you are strapped financially, and the retailer is going, Oh, thank you. Thank you. Is a big gimmick, guys. Don't fall into it. That's not what Thanksgiving is for. It's not what Christmas is for at all. Let's get back to the basics. I wish that things were way back in the 50s and 60s where 
people made ornaments. They cooked from scratch. It wasn't the big, oh, let's go buy. You know, they'll, they would look at and, and stay within their means of what they could afford. That's the way it should be. I remember, my I told you guys before, my grandparents owned a bowling alley. And so every New Year's Eve, they would have a party. And it would be anybody that bowled in the leagues and stuff was invited to come up to this party. Um, and they didn't charge anything. Um, I mean, they put on the food and the whole bit. I think it might have been that if you wanted something to drink, you had to bring your own. You know, um, but I remember that my grandmother, my mother, and I made all the decorations that hung up. We, you know, we had the styrofoam balls that we decorated with sequins and, and decorative pins and stuff. We had all kinds of bells and stuff like that that we used year after year and that were beautiful. That's the way it should be. If you want something fun to do with your kids, make sugar cookies with them. Make your own frosting because then it won't cost you as much. You know, you can use, you know, less sprinkles and more other things to decorate. Food coloring isn't that expensive either. You know, make ornaments with them. You know, let's get back to basics of what should be fun. Not, oh, let's go spend so much money that I can't really even afford. And I'm going to spend at least the next two years with a very high... Um, interest rate on my credit cards I won't even remember what I bought all I know is I owe all this extra money you know um, over shopping is a huge problem is a huge problem and I've been there I never got to an extreme but the urge was there uh, you know and then I just got where it was like, you know, don't don't be stupid about this. Because it is a high to to get something. And then you're like, oh, I wonder what other great deals are on. Let's check here. Let's check this store. Let's check that store. Stop. Stop. You don't need all this stuff. You don't. It's all stuff. You know? It's all stuff. You know? I see if you're going to buy extra of something that you really can afford, stock up your pantry, stock up on food, stock up like on your pet food and stuff that you will actually use. Um, you know, because inflation is only supposed to get higher. We just paid, I think it was 10.82 or 10.52 for 36 count eggs. And that's supposed to get up even higher. So, um it is what it is. I mean, nothing you can really do about it. But I hope everybody doesn't spend this holiday season being so stressed out. You don't have to have a new tree just because skinny trees are all the rage right now. Remember before that, the upset side down trees were all the rage. It's always something new. The reason it's new is because they want you to go buy another tree. They want you to go buy another you know, set of ornaments. Oh, these are much better ornaments. I have to admit, the LED lights are very nice. They don't cost near as much in electricity to run. They last a lot longer. We you guys saw we bought an inexpensive smaller tree that already had uh, is pre lit because we didn't want to deal with the big tree. With having the big dogs and stuff, and then deciding where to put it. It kind of more of a pain in the butt. Now we will probably get rid of at least one tree. We're not buying any new outside lights this year. We're just going to use what we have. We're going to do our um, inflatables. Uh, but we're going to do those different too because the ground here is so hard and it is so hard to anchor them down. So we're talking about how we're going to do that differently this year so we probably will end up putting out probably less lights than we have because we don't really have enough lights to really do the whole front and I'm not going to buy any more right now if I have a little bit of extra money after the holidays maybe I'll go buy some more but I'm certainly not buying any right now 
Um, you'll be amazed, though, is if you just quit with buying all the extras. If you just quit eating out as much. We never eat out unless we have a coupon, usually. We talk about it. Sure, we talk about going to Applebee's. I know I talk about Applebee's a lot, but for me, they're better priced than a lot of other places. Um, like, they're 2 for 20 and now 2 for 23 Um But to us, that's a lot of money. So if we have a coupon, we might stop by Arby's and get a couple sandwiches. Or we might stop by Harris Teeter and get a sandwich to share. Or a lot of times anymore, we just come home. Because we know we have stuff here that's already made. We bring our own drinks when we run errands. You know, Brad will grab water or a can of pop, and I'll, I usually have my coffee. Um, all of that really adds up. Eating out is so expensive. And if you really look at the food you're getting, and if you love that food, let's admit it, we all love certain things, right? You can make it at home. Learn how to cook. If you don't know how to cook, learn how to cook. That's a fun hobby. That'll take up some time. You know, that'll take up the time that you might have been doing something else. Um, there's a lot of things that we really enjoy, different sandwiches and stuff. That we've learned how to cook at home. And it's even better. And we know exactly what's in it. And it's fresh. Because we just cooked it. <laughs> you know, it hasn't been sitting there on a warming table forever. Um, you know. Like I said, I know some people wonder. Like, well geez, you guys don't really go out to eat. You really don't go to many places. Because we're used to saving money. Conserving money. That's how we've gotten away with all the years of. Me basically being a homemaker. Um, you know, and we enjoy being home. Because we both are crafty people. We're used to not running around. In Wyoming, there's not a whole lot to do. Especially in the wintertime. Unless you're a big hunter and fisher. And unless you are um, really into the drinking. There's not a whole lot to do. Those winter nights are cold and nasty. Well, the days are too. And so you learn to do crafts and occupy yourself at home. Because you never know when you may be snowed in for a few days. And that does happen. You also learn to keep a stock pantry. Because you never know when you're going to get snowed in bad enough that the doors are even going to be closed. That has happened. That has happened. You know, or if they're open, the trucks can't get through. So they're very limited on what they have. So you learn to keep you know, an adequate supply of things. Um, like I said, our lifestyle works for us. And don't be... I think, as as Americans, we're so bad of wanting one of everything. If you like, let's say, a particular... Um, let, I'm going to use me for an example. I just got in these hair clips. I'm going to show you in a minute. And these are all gold, right? So... As Americans, then I should need to run out and buy these in silver. And then I should need to run out and buy these in rose gold. Then I should need to probably run out and buy them in every color there is, right? Why? I only have one head of hair. Gold is a good, solid color. My breast, if I really wanted to dress it up, we were talking about it earlier, you said, oh, well, you could always put some ribbon on it or a flower if you really want to dress it up. I don't need to buy more. This came in a six pack. This will last me. These are metal. That's all I need. I'm going to talk about these in a minute. But, you know, we're really bad about it. If we like something, we're going to go out and buy it in every color. But we're going to go out and buy it in every style. Why? I have enough clothes. I can only wear an, one outfit at a time. I guess I could wear multiple if I want to layer myself, right? I can only, I only have one head of hair. I only have one pair of feet, etc. I have enough jewelry. I don't, you know, I am only going to wear so much of it at a time. I have enough jewelry to last me the rest of my life. And yeah, it's all costume jewelry. Who cares? Who cares? You know, most of my stuff will probably end up in a landfill someday. That's just the bare truth. You know, my clothes. 
I have enough clothes. I don't need to go out and buy any more. I have enough clothes to last me for a good number of years. Now, if something starts to wear out, I'll replace it. But we really pare down on the amount of clothes and stuff we have because if I have four pairs of pants and I have a washer and dryer here, I really don't need any more than that. I really don't. We all are so guilty of overbuying. Look at how much of your stuff you have and it's like, wait, there's got to be an end point because then you're either going to pay storage or you're going to treat your home like a storage unit for all this extra stuff. I don't need any more extra stuff. You know, what I need is the love and care of my husband. I need my animals. I need my friends. All of what you need for comfort is there. It's not about how much stuff you have, how big and fancy your house is, or your vehicle, or your job title. It's about you as a person and the kind of person you are. And the kind of person, how you treat other people. You know? And I know that's not a, a wildly universal concept anymore. It's just the way I am. You know, I don't care what your job title is. I don't care how much money you have or don't have. I want to know you as a person. What makes your mind work? You know, what what common, common interest do we share? That's what I care about. I care about if my husband is okay. I care about if he's feeling okay. You know, I care about um, being there for him and having him there for me. I enjoy us cuddling at night and stuff. I enjoy knowing, feeling his body heat at night. It's, it's nice. I feel safe. I feel I'm getting so much better sleep because he's there. And that's what happened to us is we kept calling each other at 6 a.m. going, well, I can't sleep. Okay, well, I'll be down. And then we would talk for a little bit and we'd fall asleep. Well, okay, so we're sleeping and we're taking naps together. We might as well just, you know, instead of it being that time, it's, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Maybe we could just do that now and get some more sleep, you know. But I hope everybody just stop with all the bullshit of we all need to buy so much stuff and we all need to overspend so much. And just let's get back to basics. Let's get back to knowing how to cook. So many people I can't believe don't know how to cook. And I just, I don't understand it. I was taught how to cook from an early, early age. I can remember being like five years old and being shown how to do different things. As a child, I would be in my grandmother's kitchen with my great-grandmother, my mother, my grandmother, sometimes my aunt. And it was a tiny kitchen, right? We'd all squeeze our butts in there. And we'd all be cooking together. And I love those moments. If I could repeat and have back some of those moments, I would in a heartbeat. Because that's where my heart was. That's where my heart was. In the kitchen helping peel apples or canned tomatoes. Or maybe we were making a million pie crust or... or egg noodles, whatever. That's how I was taught to cook, you know, little by little. And as a woman, and I guess just in our family, it was a prideful thing because you needed to know how to cook. You know, you needed to know how to cook a good meal, you know, and you needed to know how to cook just what you had, not what you could run out to the store and buy. Remember, we're older, so, you know, there wasn't a Stuff you could just go out and buy. But I don't remember when TV dinners first were introduced. And it was like, you know, it was a big thing. You know, but you learned how to cook what we had on hand. You know, I have an old Pioneer book that literally talks about, you know, just what you have on hand. And it's written in the old in the old ways too, um, and I just love it. They even have a recipe for making laundry soap and all kinds of stuff. But um, 
I just hope everybody will get kind of back to basics. Stop worrying about spending so much money and you're not going to gain your family's love by this extravagant gift. You know, I would feel bad if somebody got me an extravagant gift that I knew they really couldn't afford. That's almost like an emotional blackmail of, here, show me how much you love me by getting me X. You know, even as a child, I was very mindful of not asking for real expensive things from my grandparents and stuff. They could afford it. They would have gotten it for me. But, you know, I didn't believe that's how they should show their love. They had other grandchildren, too. You know. So, you know, you would get something that maybe was, you know, a little more pricier. And then you would get the middle. And then you would get the small. So they had a, a whole range to pick from, you know. Um, but... uh you know, I hate this holiday season where everybody is so greedy. Look at how we treat each other on a Black Friday sales. Jeez. You know, Thanksgiving is just about all about forgotten because it's all this Black Friday. You know, so um, I wanted to show you guys, though, I did get in, I showed you guys. Uh, it came in a nice box like this. Um, I was having such a hard time with my my hair clips, my, um, jaws, what, what do you call them? Just, I just call them my hair clip. Breaking all the time. These. And I bought these for years and years from, um, not these type, but I bought some for years and years from, uh, Dollar Tree. And they would, they would work well and they would last. The plastic ones. Well, as of the last couple of years, They've become so flimsy that the teeth break on them right away. It doesn't matter how careful you are with them or anything. So, I'm just throwing away money. So, I decided I wasn't going to buy any more from Dollar Tree. And I was going to look for some better ones that would last. And so, I was on Amazon and, like I said, I will spend sometimes hours, I will, scrolling for a good price on something. I ran across these. They were eight bucks for six of them. And they are metal. And this is so tight and stuff. So they're metal. And um, they're going to last me for a really long time. And they're bigger. So I really like that because I have a lot of hair. And I normally, the only time you see it down is when I'm going to do a video because I like to have it up. I always have it up if I'm cooking. I really don't like my hair and food and neither does Brad and like if I'm exercising or most anything I'm doing my hair is up I'll just I'll just throw it up real fast so I wanted to show you guys these they're very cute too um so I have this one these are all different designs and this one see you know once it's in it looks really nice um this is my favorite one right here. And this design. This. Oh. And then this. So I have these. These will last me for years. So I'll save money. Because I won't keep buying the very cheap Dollar Tree ones. <coughs> I don't need them in any other color style. This is plenty. I only have the one head of hair. Um, you know, and unless, and even if Brad wants to start wearing some too, you never know. Um, <laughs> we, st we can share. Right, honey? Mm -hmm. So, um, we have a sick puppy today, so I'm kind of sad. Charlie's not feeling well. He's eating a little bit, but he threw up. What, did he throw up early this morning, the first time you saw him? <clears throat> and then he threw up a couple times while Brad was gone running some errands. And because we wanted to run the errands, we didn't have to go out of the house the rest of the week. Because it's going to be crazy. So, um, I guess there's a lettuce shortage again. Hard time getting lettuce. I, we were so busy yesterday. I cooked all that meatloaf and the baked potatoes. I, I processed all that turkey, turkey meat stuff. 
did some laundry. Uh, Brad did, Brad, without helping with some different stuff as I needed him to. Um, uh, um, he did the cabbage. He was out uh, getting some resin pores unlocked from their mold as I was doing that. Um, I worked out. Um, then I needed to clip the dog's toenails. Jelly bean is so hard to clip. You give her melatonin and you wait because otherwise you're not going to be able to do a sanitary on her. And I know, I, I would feel uncomfortable with somebody running the clippers by my sphincter too, you know, but she can be a real, you know, and her feet she's gotten a lot better of, but I needed to trim her paw pads. I needed to trim her paws and clean them up, and I also needed to clip her nails. And then I needed to groom her face a little bit better. She never fights me on that, but it was a rock and roll good time, wasn't it? Yes, it was. To do the sanitary, holy Lord. And then she'll yelp for no reason. You haven't heard her. But it was me and Brad were both about having a heart attack. And so she literally gets me so upset, I'm like shaking and trying to clip her, her toenails, which are hard to clip because they're so small. So by the time we got done with her, I'm like, I, I'm not doing the other two. I'll do them tonight. I don't know if I'll do them tonight or not. I'm probably going to wait till tomorrow night because Charlie isn't feeling well. So he probably doesn't, he doesn't feel probably up to me messing with his paws. So I think I'll just plan on doing that tomorrow night because, you know, she, he's not feeling real hot. We'll see how he does with dinner. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a chill day. I'm actually going to make a hat because I haven't made any hats in a number of weeks because I've been making headbands and those are just going out of Christmas gifts. We haven't listed anything on Etsy yet. We will. We're only going to list what we have finished. And um, I'm not going to worry about the timeline on having it. But we're only going to list things that were that we have finished or that would be um, a custom order. Because um, we don't want to start making so many things that we lose the enjoyment of it. And I've, I've been there before with different crafts where if I start selling a lot of them, I will lose the enjoyment of it. So, um... You know, we talked a lot about that. And, because, uh, you know, I don't want Brad to start making some things that maybe he's not interested in making. Just because he thinks they'll sell. Um, I want him to enjoy what he's doing. And I want to enjoy what I'm doing. Um, we're going to take the hats out uh, next week. We were going to take them out today. And I woke up late and... I really didn't feel like running around. They have very limited hours or open. And I didn't feel like going at 4.30 this afternoon either. So um, we usually don't like to be out when it's dark, you know, because it's harder to see when you're walking and, and all of that. But um, we're going to do that next week. Um, and we're going to go down Senior Center and sign up and get involved with that next week. Um, you know, we're going to be able to see some different places with Christmas decorations. That'll be fun. I have to drive through the park sometime, the City Lake Park sometime at night when it's all lit up. That'll be nice, too. Um, but yeah, so that's what's going on with the Etsy and stuff, it, is I'm going to be listing paintings. Um, we'll see how it goes. If, it, if stuff isn't selling and... We're just paying listing fees. We'll probably pull that stuff and put it just on Facebook for sale. Um, which is always another option. Um, Brad, we'll be listing some of the pendants that Brad has done. He's done some more wire wrapping that look beautiful. I decide I just don't really have it in my... I, I just don't have... I'm not really into the wire wrapping. I love how it looks. But it's really not my forte. Brad knows I don't really have a lot of the patience for it. I just want to kind of twist the stuff up and you know so I did a couple pieces that were okay I did a couple pieces that were horrible Brad even said do you mind if I, I take these apart I'm like no please do so show and tell he'll be showing you that he's done some really cool stuff with braiding a wire and stuff it's really turned out nice um, 
So, yeah, you'll probably, this show and tell, have more to show you guys. Tomorrow night we are doing the true crime that we're supposed to do Sunday. And I don't know if you guys heard or not the news that um, Quentin Simon's mom was arrested yesterday. Friday, at the landfill, they found human remains. And the FBI took it up to Quantico and did testing, and it was human remains. And they're going to do further testing, but they're 99% sure it's, it's, it's him. And um, the police chief seemed to be pretty emotional about that. So I'm not sure, you know, it'd been quite some time. So whatever they found was, and, you know, that poor little boy. What, what could a 20-month-old little boy have done to, yeah, but, so they did arrest her. I hope she doesn't get out. I hope she's not able to bond out. You know, as the police chief said, she doesn't deserve a Thanksgiving. So that was sad. We heard that news last night, and it was sad, you know. You hate to know that. You hate to see that, you know. Stuff like that is disturbing. It's like, you know, that little boy won't have any more holidays. He didn't even get to see his, his, his second birthday, you know. Um... But, so, yeah, tomorrow night we're going to have the true crime that we were going to do Sunday. Um, I appreciate you guys being patient um, with, you know, some days it's just like it's been a busy day. Last night it was like 1041, and it finally dawned on us that we hadn't done the video. And I was too tired at that point in time, so was Brad. We hadn't even eaten dinner yet. So it was like, no, we're not going to do it. Um, you know, because, again, we don't make money off of this, and this is just something we enjoy to do, so you don't want to take the joy out of that either, so, um, you know, do you have anything you want to say? No? No, I'm just, you know, as, as time goes on, I am so glad I don't work in retail any longer, because, uh, you know, the retail... You know, it comes to the holidays and, and uh, um, you really lose, you really lose the significance of the holidays. I know? worked one Black Friday when I worked at Joanne's Fabrics and normal customers that come in all the time would behave in such ways on this Black Friday sale, you swore that they needed to have an exorcism because you had never seen them behave this way. I had two women that wanted to clock each other over an iron. You know, it was a $100 iron. It probably would have cost you maybe 20 at, at Walmart. But they wanted to clock each other over it. You know, I mean, it was, people would behave in such ways. It's like, are you serious? You're going to behave this way for a Christmas gift? Here, I slaughtered 20 people to get this gift for you. It's even more special. Wipe the blood off, please. Like I said, Brad did, you know. Yeah, it's all the... Poor Brad. Okay, this would be... He would get done with Thanksgiving. He had to go right into Christmas, right? Because he ran a liquor store. And then you think, okay, thanks the Lord I survived Christmas. No, you're going right into New Year's. So, by the time New Year's... Day came, he was so exhausted that he was like a puddle of goo. <laughs> you just kind of would like try to form back into what you what you remember your husband being like and prop him up in the chair. <laughs> you know, he was. He'd just be exhausted, you know. Because, I mean, he didn't even, basically between Christmas and New Year's, you don't even get a break, you know, so. Right? Yeah. Well, remember... When we were in Casper and the grocery store chain I worked at bought out that other grocery store chain. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, I don't, there was like 15 stores of this other grocery chain in our division. Mm -hmm. And so they loaded up all the extraneous mm -hmm. stuff that they could not send back or mm -hmm. our warehouse couldn't use it. 
and they sent it all to our store. And they had all these bins across the back of the store. Yep. And uh, I remember... It was marked down. And I remember, yeah, and it was, most of it was 90% off. Yeah. And I remember um, that there was a fight that broke out. And uh, this one lady ended up just beating the snot out of this other lady. And another lady ended up with a broken arm. And, uh, wow. and it was finally what they had to do is they had people line up outside and they came in the emergency exit on the side and the police were there and monitoring all of this wow. and they'd only let in like three at a time isn't that crazy yeah for and... some markdown stuffing or cereal or whatever i mean it's crazy i mean what about the shootings you see black friday yeah. and then sometimes there'll be something that everybody wants like say a new new gaming system the day we'll have to have security guards walk you outside so it's not taken. Yeah. You're not robbed. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah. I, I stick at home. We're not even doing any online Black Friday shopping because you know, we be broke people. But, and that's fine. Uh, you know, I'm not real tempted because, you know, I've learned over the years you think something is a phenomenal price. You wait a couple of weeks at that same store or another another store like them will have maybe even a better price mm -hmm. so um is it worth sacrificing your life risking your life for that i don't think so so um i hope everybody has a wonderful day and thank you for listening to me ramble on and um as always do something nice for somebody else and then do something nice for yourself uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already please share with your friends um, we love your comments and we will be back tomorrow night with the true crime and it's a good one. So as always, everybody say bye, Brad. Bye, Brad. Bye guys.